Hi everyone, greetings from Napanee Baptist Church. My name is Pastor John Stewart and it's good to be with you again. And if you are just joining us for the first time, welcome. This is something we do every weekday. Uh, it started out during the pandemic just so we could stay connected as a church family, but we are welcoming anyone to join us. All we do during these visits is we read the Bible together and then I give a few comments, and then we pray and commit our day to the Lord. So this is Monday, April the 11th, and it's really good to be with you. So if you can turn on your Bibles, we're doing a little series in the book of Romans. So Romans chapter 2, if you can turn there, starting with verse 17. So a short reading today, Romans 2, starting with verse 17. The Apostle Paul says in verse 17, Now you, if you call yourself a Jew, if you really rely on the law and boast in God, if you know his will and approve of what is superior because you are instructed by the law. Verse 19, If you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those who are in the dark, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of little children, because you have in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth. You then, who teach others, do you not teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? You who say that people should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? Verse 23, you who boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? As it is written, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. So who Paul is talking to here would be religious Jews. And I would say the application is even more general than that to religious people in general, is that He's writing to people who put, are putting their confidence in their religion because they are basically saying, especially when it came to Judaism and to the Jews of this time, they would boast and say, well, we keep the Ten Commandments. We're not sinners. We keep all of God's written law. And Paul is saying, really? 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 You may claim not to be a sinner and you have never outwardly, perhaps, committed terrible sins, but inwardly you've broken the law. And if we were honest with ourselves, every one of us has broken the law. We have broken all Ten Commandments in our hearts. Maybe not outwardly, or we actually haven't murdered somebody or committed adultery, but in our hearts we have. And so Paul is leveling the playing field here, and it's the same theme that we've talked about already in the first two chapters of, of Romans, and he continues it for the next few chapters, that we are all under the curse of sin. We are all sinners, even if we claim to be religious. We still sin, and that becomes the issue. The issue is, how is our sin going to be dealt with? And we've talked about this before. And the reason it, or the answer is that Jesus will solve the sin problem. Jesus will take on our sins on himself and he will die a substitutionary death for us. He'll take our place and he'll make that atonement for our sins. Our religious efforts will never do that. You will be never, you will never be good enough to be accepted by God through trying in your own way or trying to keep religious rules to say, oh, well, I keep the law. No, in your heart, you're still a sinner. And the only way we can be forgiven is through the gift of Jesus Christ that God has given us. And it's through that gift we're made right with God. We're accepted by God, even though when we become Christians and we believe in Jesus Christ, we put our faith in him and we follow him, we still sin, 
But those sins are covered because we have a Savior. We have a mediator, an advocate, Jesus Christ, who stands and defends us on our behalf before God. And so we abide in him. We rest in him. We claim his finished work at Calvary uh, as far as our sins are concerned. So that's just an encouragement to all of us who are believers is that Jesus solves the sin problem when it comes to us being good enough to be accepted by God. Religious laws will never do it. It's only through the blood of Jesus. It's only through our relationship with him. And if you're someone watching and you are religious and you're thinking that your good efforts or you're following the commands of, of your church or uh, doing what the are following the rules, that's never going to cut it because you are a sinner and you will fail. You will blow it sooner or later. And we have to put our faith in Jesus. He's the one who saves. We don't save ourselves. He saves us and he keeps us. And he is there for us every step of the way. So may you be encouraged today. I hope you have a great day starting a new week here. And it's coming into the Easter time now and getting ready for Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And so let's just pray and commit ourselves as we remember what Christ has done for us during this Easter time. So let's pray together. Father in heaven, I thank you for each person today who's watching and I just pray for our church family in general that you would bless each one that you would draw near to us that you would encourage our hearts that you would lift us up help us to remember that we can't do anything to make ourselves more acceptable in your sight it's only through Jesus it's only through your son that we are saved and that we are accepted and declared innocent not guilty before a holy God. It's not through our religious efforts or us trying to measure up or us trying to be better. It's always, it has to be through Jesus and it has to be through his sacrifice and by your Holy Spirit. You give us the ability to do what's right, but that's not what saves us. Only Jesus saves. And so we thank you for that reminder today. Just bless us now, we pray. We just give you this new week and be with each of us during this Easter week leading up to Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. And we're planning to have a big program at the church. Lord, I pray that you'll just bless each one who comes and help us to remember all that you've done for us through your, your precious Son. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you bright and early back here on Tuesday morning. Take care. Bye-bye.